Well, here we are again, Snow Creek Farms, and we're gonna introduce the goats today and do a little bit of uh, sharing with the goats or about the goats and about uh, the other male goats that we've got. All of our females are in this paddock over here and we're gonna share about them today and kind of give a little idea of each one that we have. And um, we just wanna welcome you back and uh, hope you enjoy this video. So the sheep are way on that side of the farm and the goats have their own big, huge oasis over here. <laughs> So we'll take you in to see the goats. So the goats are hands down my favorite animal on the homestead. They are just amazing in every way. We have a couple different kinds of goats. We have some that we milk, so they're bigger breeds, like an Alpine and a La Mancha. Those are the ones that we milk. And then we have Nigerian dwarfs and they're Let's just be honest why we have the Nigerian dwarf. Sailor, baby. Sailor. Who doesn't love a baby Nigerian dwarf? We got Sailor. He gets hugs too. This is Mama Sailor. She loves that forehead rub. So, yeah, we'll start with Sailor here. Sailor and her four little babies Copper, Judge, Branch, and Ruby. Then we've got over here, we've got Naomi, my homie. <laughs> Naomi, Shalomi. <laughs> She's homie. our La Mancha. Mm, that's awesome. Then we've got Shiloh. She is Sayla's baby from last year. Yeah, you a good girl. Huh? You then we've got team. Olive. She is, she was born here on the farm two years ago. And she's an Angora Alpine mix. And her and her sister are just really cool looking. They know, they get long curly hair. They've been shaved for the year though. Here's her sister over here, Maple. She had two babies, Angel and King. Then we got Violet over here, Miss Violet. Oh, sweet, mischievous. She Violet. was born last year. She had to be a bottle baby. She was so tiny. Hmm. Oh, and then Eva. Oh, yeah. Eva was a bottle baby, weren't you? Eva about yeah. died yeah. before she ever lived. Eva could not <clears throat> breathe when she was first born, and my mom took her in and loved on her and saved her life. Put her underneath her hoodie. Yeah. And, and kept her warm. Yeah, kept her warm. <clears throat> Then we've got Jordan. Jordan is a mini La Mancha. Here's the goat barn over here. It's under construction. Yeah, still. it's still under construction. We've every, added on three times. We every, started with five by five, or we went to a 10 by 10. Now we're at 35 by 35. It's never been big enough, so we keep <clears throat> adding on. Now she wants a 40 by 40. So these you are know. our uh, birthing stalls for the goats. And we all, four of us, worked very hard to build this from scratch by ourselves. So if the you whole wanna, farm, mm -hmm. really. So if you want to build a five by five barn, five foot by five foot, I'll give you the blueprint for a 40 by 40. <laughs> okay? All right. <laughs> There's Maya, she came out. These are the buck paddocks. These are our little mini bucks, Nigerian dwarfs, and they are Abel and his son Joseph. We call him Jojo. We got right here, we got Mr. Joseph and we got Mr. Abel. This is dad and this is son. And they are really cool goats, but they really, really stink. They smell like urine. And get off my shirt. And they like to, they like to fight, but they're so small that they can be dealt with pretty easily so if you want to start with some small male goats this is a they're a good, really easy breed a good breed yeah. to start with because they they're easy to deal with and manage so you can easily put them on their side and clip their hooves and and uh, do the things that you need to do for them and help them so they love to eat zit seats this is malachi he is a beautiful la mancha buck he's got huge horns He's very, very, very sweet, great boy. Um, 
La Manchas are just really one of the best um, temperaments, at least that I've, I've ever met. And then we've got Boaz over here. And he's an alpine buck. And he's got big, huge horns too. He's a sweet boy too. He loves it. But right now they're not in rut, so they're not as stinky. In a few months they'll go into rut and you won't be able to come near them. They pee all over themselves and make themselves lovely for the women. Um, but it's really nasty. But this is the paddock that we bring them to. <clears throat> Every now and then we will rotate out the cows with the goats because they don't like to eat their grass in their paddock. So we'll put the cows in there and the cows will eat it down. So they're down here in the paddock that we built for breeding. So this is kind of our love shack for the goats. Yeah, love shack <laughs> for the goats. So now we're in the shelter house. This is our favorite spot in the whole world to sit and enjoy the outdoors. We can see the entire farm from here. Um, it's so beautiful on summer nights. We built it last year. We also built the big raised beds with all the beautiful um, medicinal herbs behind us that I love to cook with and make medicine with. And, and so we're gonna sit here and have a little chat. About? About? Redemption. Redemption. I would like to say first off that um, we're doing these videos mainly to share the good news. And <laughs> my son's laughing at me right now behind the camera, so I'm having trouble <laughs> keeping a straight face. But we're doing this, these videos to share the good news and the gospel with people that need encouragement and that need hope and that maybe need to hear what we have to say about um our lives and what happened in our lives and why uh, we we like praising Yahweh because of what he did and uh, why we live the way we live and why we do what we do it's because of Yahweh and and because of what he gave us and being here on this farm it is Misty just said it that it's a sign it's a symbol of redemption and I asked Logan uh, this morning or yesterday actually last night I asked him uh, what was my re wedding ring and my wedding ring is a sign. It's just a sign It's a symbol of the covenant that that I have between me and my wife <clears throat> and um, Focusing on things that we do here and doing the things that we do on this farm They are really a symbol and a sign of redemption because Misty and I both were dead and we were lost and we were fatherless and motherless, basically. Um, I mean, we, we, you know, have mothers and have fathers, but we um, chose to do things in our lives that, that caused us, you know, pain to our family. And, and it's really caused us a lot of time and we wasted a lot of time. And the father's still seen us and he still, um, he still had mercy on us. And so this video and these videos that we're doing that's the number one reason why we're doing them is because we want to share with people uh, what the Father's done and why we live the way we live now. And we live the way we live now because He gave us a chance. And for me, He's given me many chances. And I know for most of you, if you look back over your life, you would say that He's given you chance after chance after chance after chance. And, and every time I think about the chances that He gave me, I'm reminded of his love and his grace and, and um, how he nev has never failed me, like he said in his word. And every time I would um, go through the things that I would go through, the struggles and, um, you know, the problems that I caused for myself, he was always there like a good father with open arms to hold me and to help me and to tell me that, you know, I can do better, I can do good. And so doing this, these, these farm animals and having these farm animals has changed our lives. It's, it's made us um, get closer to the Father. It's caused us to see uh, his, his mercy and His grace and through how He provides for them and through how He heals them, how He, how he gives them life every day. They wake up. I mean, these animals, 
go to bed at night and they come they're back again in the morning you know and, and the they same rely on same, us like same we thing rely for us yeah and we rely we rely on the father to feed us and to clothe us and uh, these animals i don't see a lot of worry on them i just see them living and so we too do not need to worry about tomorrow or the things that we need the clothing the food we need to live for today and be thankful for today so uh, redemption to me is that and there's a lot more to it for me than just that and I'll share that in the future in our testimony and um, if you'll stay tuned and you'll keep keep liking our videos and um, we'll, we're gonna share our, our testimony uh, full on probably in parts uh, because it is very long and um, we don't want to make it about us or make it about some big thing that happened to us in our lives but we do want to share it in such a way that it would transform people that Yahweh's word would be spoken through our mouths and, and you would hear the voice of Yahweh when we speak uh, concerning what he's, he's allowed us to go through. Um, some things on our own doings and some things that, uh, that have just happened to us. <clears throat> but I'm always reminded that Paul said, the things that happened to me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. So whatever happens to us and whatever happens in this life to, to you, if you're trusting Yahweh, if it happens to you, remember that from a flat tire to cancer to whatever might come your way, whatever happens, it is to further the gospel. Only if we allow it to and only if we choose to, to be obedient to doing the things that he wants us to do. And so, again, here at this farm, doing things and trying to remember every day that um, he gave us this opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel like I deserve this house, this mm -hmm. place, this business. I don't really feel like I deserve a family, but he gave it to me. And um, I'm so thankful that, that I get to share this with you. And so that's my part, uh, I guess my part uh, 0.5 of my redemption. And um, I do want to say that um, I, I kind of feel like we both were at the gates of hell and we lived in such chances. and we lived yeah. in such a way that like David said, you delivered me from the gates and the power of the grave. Sheol. And so that is, uh, is where I was in my spirit and in my life. I was drug ridden prison, um, alcoholism, and just a poor parent, and so on and so forth, and it was 16 years ago, but, but, but knowing all that, that reminds me that he's greater than that, and he's greater than my failures, and so that's why I am where I am today. I, I was snatched, uh, you know, like Nathan says, I'm snatched from the flames, mm -hmm. and I was brought back to life, and so like the blind man said, he said, I know this is that I was blind, but now I see. And that's what I know today is that because of Yeshua, because of the life that he gave, you know, his life as a sacrifice, I was once blind and now I get to see. And so seeing uh, is, is, uh, is where we are. We get to see his works. And so we're very blessed by that. So that's so for me this week, um, this whole thing I've been very reluctant about, about even doing. But the Father kept, kept telling me over and over, confirming to me that I needed to do it, especially through my husband. <laughs> and I've been very nervous. Um, our stories can be a little bit shocking in some ways, um, a little bit embarrassing at times, um, but I'm no longer ashamed of what of uh, what I've been through and he wants us to share his our stories and he wants people to know that they are never <clears throat> sorry I get very emotional that they are never too far gone that they have never strayed too far that they cannot come running back mm. like the prodigal son and oh is that story exactly exactly my life except for I was the daughter obviously um, but I literally looked death in the face, literally, and I'm here now and I'm thriving. And because I walk in his ways and I read his word every day and I do what I'm supposed to and I do what's right, he blesses me immensely. He blesses you because he loves you. So there is hope. 
there's so much hope. And even if you feel like you're in the dark, dark despair, you've never gone too far. Mm. So just come back. <laughs> just come back. So, Misty wants to share a testimony a little bit at a time, and I understand why. It's pretty emotional. It's pretty, um, it's abrasive. It's not, definitely not a PG, PG mm -hmm. movie. So we're going to share it a little bit at a time as we go. And uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned and you'll subscribe. If you want to see more of these videos, please do that. I have to, you know, like do, and subscribe. do the whole check the box below, <laughs> check the link or whatever <laughs> my son says people say. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, all of you out there that know uh, how to do all that, please subscribe to this channel. We want to... Uh, use we this want to share. if if um, you know this it does become something and and, uh, and it's something that we need to continue doing. We want to we want to continue doing it. We want to bless other people, and uh, we eventually want to go back to uh, doing what we once did. We went to the homeless, and we would like to share with them and encourage them and, and those that are uh, possibly imprisoned or or people that that uh, are are uh, fatherless the and widows. orphan and the widows. The Bible says, pure and undefiled religion mm -hmm. before Yahweh is this, to visit the fatherless and the widow in their affliction and to keep one's, one undefiled from the world. I believe that's how the last part goes, but um, it talks about um, basically, you know, uh, visiting the fatherless and the widow in their affliction. And we all are fatherless without mm. the father. Mm -hmm. And we're all widows without the husband, we all which have is this Yeshua. big hole in us that needs to be filled mm. and no one can fill it. Nothing on this earth. And I am a testimony, a walking testimony to that. And so is Derek, that there is nothing on this whole earth that can fill that void but him. Mm. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, part point five <laughs> of um, just why we're, we're uh, doing this in the beginning really and um kind of kind of our uh prelude to um you know where, where we uh, feel the father leading us and sharing with people uh what we've been through and why we do what we do so um continue to watch and uh like i said like and subscribe to uh the channel so that uh, we can continue to move forward with it so thanks for for taking the time to listen to us and uh, there'll be more so Shalom, shalom. See you next time.